Hey everyone, this is Uthris. Welcome back to Terra Firmacraft. Uh, so last episode we were finishing up the forge and also uh, getting ready to start crafting our first anvil. But we didn't have any flux and flux is used to weld two ingots to together to make a double ingot and we need how many of those? Uh, seven of those double ingots to make one copper anvil. And that copper anvil will allow us to actually forge copper tools. And so I'm hoping to, to get into blacksmithing this episode. So I went ahead. You'll notice we're not at base. I ran for probably about 15 minutes into a different direction than we last headed to find a rock that produces flux. And I found some marble and that produces flux. Uh, all I had to do is hit the actual little rocks with the hammer and your <coughs> crafting table. You'll get some flux and you should be on your way. So I'm going to try and get about 60 of this stuff. And that should last a little while. I mean one flux per one weld. So I mean we can do 60 welds. Um, any more than that, I'll probably have to just come back. Um, I'll bring my pickaxe probably next time as well, because mining away at the actual stone gives you these little rocks quicker than uh, going around trying to pick them up. Anyways, I think that's how I wanted to start the episode today. Uh, I'm still coughing. I generally get about this, uh, this weird cough and wheezing thing every time it goes from winter to spring it just kind of always happen I think it's just my body adjusting to the temperature change but uh hopefully it won't be too annoying this episode and uh, I apologize if, if it's loud but uh, it is what it is all right everyone so we're back at base with our flux as you can see it kind of started to just thunderstorm um, it's kind of putting a delay in what we wanted to do at the moment. But, what I can show you is tanning. So, I'm pretty sure you can stick hide okay, into one of these barrels. I'm going to start with the lime water. And what the lime water is going to do is going to break down the, <coughs> the fur and everything so you can scrape it off. Um, lime water is basically a, a barrel full of water and then you add flux to it and it turns it into lime water. So we'll go ahead and seal it and as soon as you seal it you can see the output is a medium soaked hide and then um, once that is done we will scrape that hide using a knife in the crafting table and then we'll let it soak in water the same way and then the final step is to soak it in the tanning solution so after those three barrels you'll have a piece of leather and you can turn it into many things from like a horse's saddle to uh, uh, bags for bellows so you can use that on a forge so, um, le leather is very useful in the game. <coughs> and, uh, yeah. So, what we're going to do, since we're waiting for things to kind of progress, I would like to fill up this ceramic vessel that we have full of the rest of our copper, or tetrahedrite. And let's see, this should make. Uh, I'm, I'm not a, awake enough to do the math, but it's 29 tetrahedrite times 25. Um, not quite 8 bars. Should be 7 or so. So we'll have 7 bars, and that'll be enough for a couple double ingots nothing really for what we need um, so while it's raining as well I guess we can hop down into the mine 
and uh, get some more. I don't think that's a bad idea to do. Let's grab the prospectors, pick two. Oh, and it stops raining. What? We need more tetrahedrite anyways. I'm also going to have to make some more molds to uh, pour the molten metal once we heat it up using uh, the ceramics. So let's, <coughs> let's see here. Here's some tetrahedrite. I'm really hoping it doesn't cave in on me like it did yesterday. Um, for one, I'd, I'd rather not freak out like last time. Uh, two, I'd rather not die. Because if I die in here, uh, basically, we lose this pickaxe, and it's going to set us back a decent amount. Let's see, you can't see very well down here. So, <laughs> I'm using my prospector's pick, kind of make sure I'm mining the right thing. that we might as well try to get a full ceramic vessel of tetrahedrite I think that is the best thing to do since we're going to be smelting a lot of it down I'm trying to think of how much that would actually give please do not collapse on me We need about 21 more of this stuff. And so I'm going to run two, um, maybe three uh, pick kilns to give us uh, a fair amount of ceramic molds to hold all of our molten metal in. And then we'll bust them out and Hopefully, while they're still hot, I should be able to weld them. If not, I'll have to heat them up in the forge to, uh, to be, bring them up to the welding temperature that we need. And I think that's like uh, the color orange in terms of the metal temperature. So when, it, when the bar turns orange color, it, it's pretty much ready to weld. At least for copper uh, different materials have different temperatures to be worked for and then also to be weld so we get back here we definitely found a good size uh, vein especially for our first one extremely lucky that it was close to our base couldn't really ask for better unless it was like a Oh, shit. Okay. We're live. <laughs> um, that was fun. I have no idea how bad the cave-in was. Obviously, we had to dig ourselves out a little bit. Hopefully, we didn't lose too many ores. And wow, that went all the way up to the surface. So you can see kind of how much trouble you can get into by doing all this stuff. So basically we need to find the entrance that we use to get in and out, reestablish a connection to our tunnel, which is right here. This sets us back a little bit in terms of finding ore because it covers up areas, uh, breaks other ore, so uh, hopefully it doesn't set us back too much. 
So we just need six more tetrahedrite, and we're gonna have a full. Uh, God damn it! And I'm dead. Oh shit. Okay. Um. It always takes me a second. Gonna get my bearings. I don't know if we can get back there. <coughs> and actually be able to find our stuff. If we don't find the pickaxe, then basically that stuff is lost. Um, and we'll have to do another surface look around for the ore for our new pickaxe. And that will set us back a good bit. I was carrying a lot of stuff. So it looked like I chose the right direction initially. This is our plum tree from earlier, so our base is in this direction, which is nice. So hopefully we can get back here. Uh, our stuff will still be there. It takes about five minutes to despawn. And then of course how the game handles chunks. Um, if it's just left on the ground, uh, even if the chunk unloads, then uh, we're going to lose it. Now, as you can see, definitely affected the upper level of dirt and things with our cave-in. Just checking the surface first. I see a bunch of stuff down there. I'm going to try and get, get there using the ladder first. It's probably not going to work. Oh, I see something copper. That's our pickaxe. Okay, that's good. So that's a good start. I'm going to hop in the hole that it made, and hopefully we'll be able to dig out the rest of our stuff. Especially our ceramic vessel with all of our uh, current supply of ore that we just mined. At the risk of all of our tools and items. Let's see here. What do we get? What is the prize? Okay, so we got all of our tetrahedrite back. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of this death trap. If I can figure out where we need to go. Hmm. might be easier to just pillar my way out but then again <laughs> most likely not as well I'd... pillaring doesn't work very well in this uh, modded version of the game oh. <laughs> okay so we made it out <laughs> and I cough up another lung Feel like a miner all of a sudden so okay now we know how unstable that whole area is we have a bunch of ceramic i mean tetrahedrite in our ceramics uh let's see i need to get clay we're gonna make four new molds More like six new molds, and basically at this point we're just going to wait till date. Ah, actually no, I'm gonna kill you, zombie. Come here. I got an axe with your name on it. Please die. Thank you. So we're going to fire up a ceramic vessel. Six new molds, and uh, it's not really enough. Whatever. We also need some more firewood. Sixteen firewood to be exact, and then also sixteen straw to actually get these going. nice thing about the firewood we don't need the same type of wood to do this 
We just need eight firewood per kiln. And eventually I'm gonna make a stone kiln house. Uh, they, they look nice. And then also they don't catch on fire compared to a wooden kiln house. And once I get a chisel, I'll be able to kind of showcase the, the chisel tool and, and doing micro blocks because you can do some pretty cool sculptures uh, with that tool. It basically turns, I think it turns into a 16 by 16, every block into a 16 by 16 uh, micro block. So you can carve out a decent amount of detail. Or maybe it's 8 by 8. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's been a while. I'll have to sh look at it when we get it. And also, hopefully soon, we'll be moving from the, the underground um, home to a actual house. Also, the leather looks like it's done. It's, it's medium so tied now. You just need to scrape it with a knife. Or not. I think actually I put it in here. No. What do I do with you? <laughs> I forget. Okay. I'll look that up while these are going, I guess. So I can explain more as we wait. So go ahead and fill these up. And light them. Nice. First try on both. And then from here. Um, give me one second. I'm, I'm going to look up the finishing steps for tanning. We got the first part, right? I don't think it goes in the tanning solution yet. Nope. <laughs> no, it does not. Okay. Just for looks, this is how I set up my uh, leather kind of workbench, I guess. You, you have to put a sideways plank of wood like this and you can put leather on top of it and then from what I understand I equip a knife and then right click and actually clean each area off you can see the pixels changing color and my knife broke which is always a wonderful sign let me just make two more here and it looks like if it breaks and I take the hide off I lose progress. Uh, I need a stick to stick these things on. Give me a stick. So I hope you guys are going to enjoy the Space Engineers series once we get rolling onto it. It looks like everyone wants me to build a mining ship. And I hope you guys don't get confused between a like a mining operation, like a, a large mining vessel compared to like just a miner. Um, because again, we're starting small and getting larger. So we're going to be building just a small mining ship initially, nothing too fancy. Um, it's not, it's not gonna be drilling straight through and taking out a whole asteroid by any means. So anyways, we're just gonna go ahead and hold right click, go over this hide. It'll give us a medium scraped hide. And then I think, yes, so I will seal that into a barrel of fresh water. As you can see also, you can hold usually 10,000 uh, MB full of liquid in a barrel. When we tan something, it takes up um, some of that used material. So it's something to keep in mind. These are going to keep going for a little while. I need to solve kind of my food issue. You guys will notice a couple episodes ago, I didn't really go over it, but I went ahead and planted some tomato plants and they are growing nicely. As you can see, they actually have an actual wooden stake that they grow up. And um, let me go grab my hoe and I can explain the basic functions of the hoe in the mod but it's definitely a little different we had a metal one um, there's additional functions built into it but this stone one uh, has some basic ones 
So you'll notice at the end of my toolbar, there's this new thing that pops up. In this mode is basically your your sow the ground. You, you, you make actual fields. Okay? And then pressing M changes the mode of the hoe. Water mode, which basically checks to see if it's hydrated. As you can see, all of ours are blue, which is a sign of hydration. And then we also have this turn up looking thing, which is harvest mode. It it'll let us know when the crop is ready to harvest. It's red, it's not ready to harvest. Um, and then you're back into uh, creating fields. Now, a metal hoe has one additional effect and that is nutrients level. Plants take a certain nutrients from the soil and so you're gonna have to do a crop rotation eventually if you're doing a large farm because otherwise your plants grow slower and um, are just overall more weak in terms of lifespan and since they grow slower you might risk running into winter time sooner rather than later and that will pose a problem I'm going to go over here and get, gather some seaweed for food we're still waiting on the kiln to go through I don't know how long I want this episode to go I think I definitely wanted to do some blacksmithing and I might have to do a longer time skip just so we can get to that spot and making our anvil and uh, if, if I have to do that then I will okay combine all these now eat some seaweed okay. I think that's a decent amount <laughs> I don't need any arrows but what I do need though is a shovel and I'm gonna make that now gather some more clay for more clay molds because we do need them and then hopefully once we get some more molds going we'll be able to finish off our uh, anvil so I'm, I'll, I'll be back after I get a decent amount of molds and uh, the things finished firing at that point and I should be able to explain blacksmithing or at least welding uh, the ingots together for our first anvil all right everyone so we're ready to make our first metal anvil I have the forge up and running foot full of charcoal and what we're going to be doing it's basically kind of a race against time. And once the metal's high enough, I'm gonna grab two bars. Uh, I'm only gonna heat up four at a time because if you heat up more than that, it's a little inefficient because you're gonna have this awkward uh, fifth one rolling around. You can only weld two of them together at once. So no point in heating up more than that. You can see the little uh, temperature gauge beneath the size and you're gonna get an asterisk for every percent up through that uh, type of temperature and once it's in weldable stage we'll go ahead and throw it into these columns above the weld button and weld it and it'll take one flux to do so and then we'll combine those in our crafting table to make our first anvil Hopefully this doesn't take too long to heat up. Uh, the forge can take a little bit to get up to temperature, which is just pretty much now reached. So hopefully it shouldn't take too long. We have these extra bits of ceramic on this sidebar here, and that is in case these overheat and I'm not quick enough. This will basically catch the molten metal so we don't lose it. Uh, let's see, do I have any other molds? I'm gonna carry two just in case. <laughs> so the status for this now is can work and it's a dark red to bright red metal. It's warming up very nice. I'm 
gonna go ahead and take these two out. And once this is ready to weld, I'll go ahead and swap those two bars back in just so we can kind of... So it can weld. I'm going to let it go just a little bit more until it says warning. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to add those two back in there. It's orange. I think that's a good temperature to do this. And so we're just going to uh, put these in here and hit weld. Now we have a double ingot. Put in some new ones to start heating those up while these are finishing off. And as you can see, we have one copper double ingot. So these can be weld. I'm going to wait until they turn orange, just like before. And then pop them out. Drag them into the weld area and give them a good tap. Toss in two new bars. And we're going to repeat this until we have seven of these. Alright guys, I apparently goofed a little bit. Um, I forgot to get the final ingot out of our ceramic vessel. So we're waiting for that to go through. Uh, in the meantime, I took our leather out of the tanning solution. And we have it here. We have two pieces of leather. And I believe you just right click on it to bring up the menu. Like so. And the first thing we're going to make, I think, is a saddle. And this is the plan for a saddle. We get one saddle here. And uh, the reason being so, if we find a horse, I'm going to tame that puppy. And allow us to get around a lot quicker and more efficiently. The next item, I really don't know, maybe... Uh, now I have this menu up, I really have to kind of do it here. Uh, what is the plan for leather chest piece? Not that. I think I done goofed and uh, let's see can I make this work for a boot no nope and that recipe failed I lost leather that happens uh, it's not a big deal so we have six double ingots here all right this is done so we're going to head and get our ingot here. And what you can do with these ingots when they're in the mold like this, uh, notice how it's brilliant white and liquid. I wouldn't be able to get the metal out of there um, because it would just basically melt. Uh, so what you can do, you can actually cool it in fresh water and boom, we're back to orange. I mean instant. Just and it keeps that temperature there. It's in the danger zone. You know. That's fine. So once this meets the other ingot, we'll go ahead and warm them both up together. <clears throat> Give them a quick weld. Throw down our first metal anvil. And probably call it a episode. As you can see, my voice is pretty much gone by the end of this. Um, it's kind of a shame because I was pretty excited to record, but from all the coughing fits and everything, it uh, became quite a chore. <laughs> yeah. So I hope you guys are enjoying Terra Firmacraft. It's definitely like my favorite mod for my, my Minecraft. Um, it adds a lot of in-depth and really slows kind of the progression down. It makes you think about what you're doing and uh, you can't just start finding diamonds right off, essentially. So these are the same temperature. So we'll go ahead and start raising them up together. Throw in one last charcoal for good luck. <coughs> and hopefully. Oh, wow. <coughs> Man. Okay. So my voice is seriously about to give out. 
going to be awesome. And hopefully, I, I, hopefully my voice is better tomorrow for Space Engineers. Because I think that one's a little bit more technical. And there's going to be a lot of stuff for me to talk about in terms of my thought process. Oh, throw one last charcoal on the fire. The charcoal heat kind of represents how hot your metal can get to. Um, so if it's in the red area, your thing's not going to get hotter than red. And if it's an orange, it's not going to get hotter than orange. Uh, it's going to get to that level and then essentially stop. So you can kind of use that as a uh, ceiling for how hot you want things to be. Anyways, we have all of our double ingots. And we can throw them down in this I formation and get our copper anvil. And we're overburdened. So we'll just throw that on our back, apparently. What does that look like? <laughs> I'm a fucking turtle. Awesome. Turtle. Turtle, turtle. Turtle. Okay, that's enough of that. So let's go ahead and drop it right next to the forge. And that is our first metal anvil created in Terraforma Craft. Next episode, we're going to do some actual blacksmithing. Uh, I need to get this flux store that in there but yeah next episode we're gonna do some blacksmithing I'll make a chisel and some more copper tools and then from there we'll start working on building the first real home and uh, hopefully we will get it done before winter it's late summer right now because winter food is hard to come by and uh, wouldn't mind getting our food supplies up getting that prepared Ooh, out in the distance our tomatoes are growing so as you can see they're starting to bear some fruit and that'll be nice in the next coming month or so when those become harvestable thanks for watching as always if you guys are enjoying the content feel free to subscribe check out medieval engineers or space engineers in my channel those are some of my more popular things and i'll see you guys in the next episode